This is the uh, second hour of Wake Up Sierra Leone and it's the final segment. In the studio now we've been joined by the presidential spokesman Yusuf Keketo Masandi to talk on the importance of President Julius Madabio's visit to Qatar, Rwanda and France among other things. Uh, good morning and thanks for joining us. Good morning Fibian, thanks for having me. Good morning Lambrana and good morning Sierra Leone. How's the office of the presidential spokesman? Uh, it's always an opportunity, a privilege to serve and then uh, to work with the president who is very passionate about development, passionate about our country. It's an inspiration and you learn a lot. Um, there are challenges that you take on board, um, more especially now with the social media politics and, um, you know, the challenging times with the um, pandemic, the COVID, the global disruptions of fuel and everything. So what it does across the world, it puts governments on a um, lot of pressure and responsibilities. And I think um, we, we really see the opportunity, but also when you have a president who is very, um, he's very caring, he thinks a lot about um, Sierra Leoneans, he thinks uh, what we can do now. Um, it's, um, it's an inspiration. So you wake up every morning, you want to go to work, and you want to serve the people of this country because um, it's a privilege to serve. Now let's talk about the president's uh, trip, three countries uh, back to back. Uh, the purpose of the trips? Well, um, I would start by saying normally with overseas trips, they are categorized into two. So you have trips which are made purely for to deepen bilateral relations. And you have other trips which are made for statutory meetings. So for instance, um, we are there by virtue of our country being members of those multilateral agencies. So whether it's Commonwealth, it's UN, it's ECOWAS, you know. Um, so with the first trip to Qatar, um, it was born out of a... So when we went to COP26, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Professor David Francis, had a brush by with the Emir of Qatar. And because of that brush by, the Emir of Qatar expressed interest and he was very impressed with what the um, president has been doing in Sierra Leone and he said that it would be good for him to pay a state visit to Qatar where they can further that relationship and that was how it was born. So we went to um, Qatar, we were received by the Emir of Qatar and when we were in Qatar we had um, specifically um, two different types of engagement. So the first was at the bilateral level between the president and the Emir of Qatar, where they discussed a lot of things. So one of which was to make sure that how to be strengthening the relationship between Sierra Leone and Qatar. For instance, probably whether you explore having embassies, like for instance, so Qatar, they have an embassy in Liberia, but also how do we make sure that um, we explore trade and investment opportunities. Um, there are a lot of challenges um, countries have, but I think one thing that came out of it was that um, throughout the meeting with the Emir of Qatar, it was always saying, in four years, you have done so much in education. In four years, you have done so much in the protection of the rights of women. In four years, you are chairing the APRM or the AU, you know, which means that selling has changed, you know, because before now, you used to hear selling about the um, most corrupt states, the, 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 the Ebola affected country, you know. So the branding is doing well for the president and selling as well, you know. But above that as well, in that meeting, um, they also made sure that they are going to focus on um, agriculture and um, mining, which I think is important. So we also had the Minister of Agriculture who held um, a further bilateral relationship and they signed six agreements whilst we were there. So that was at the bilateral level. And then on the trade and investment level, because normally with these um, meetings, when you go there, you also see, okay, how do you position Sierra Leone? to have more foreign direct investment to your country. Mm. Because these are people who have a lot of resources and they want to see where opportunities are there. So in the meeting, the president... Uh, and this is something the, the, the head of the Chamber of Commerce of yeah. Qatar said yeah. we've not taken advantage of. Yeah. Um, you, you know, Qatar is one place the president has visited um, most often since he came to power. Mm -hmm. And um, when he was talking, I read this story online, mm. um, he was saying the... the trade between Qatar and Selyun is still very low. Yeah. Is, is this something we've not been able to take advantage of? Not really, because um, we've only visited Qatar once mm -hmm. in April 2018. I think that was the first visit we ever did. Mm -hmm. But you know, with um, these countries and people who have resources to spend, and that is why sometimes presidents make those visits, mm -hmm. you know, because you have to get the commitment at the highest level, at the presidency level. Because imagine somebody has, let's say, 50 million US dollars. 
they want to come and invest. They will not just rely on what they see on Google or what they rely on just probably a minister will say. But when you have a commitment from the presidency level to say that, okay, we are open for business, we have a national investment board where you can come as a one shop, you can do many things, you know, that commitment, we can protect your profit or your package back to your country. It's very important. You know, so we had with the um, Qatari Chamber of Commerce, we had with um, um, the Qatari Investment Authority, you know. So what's happened in all of those meetings was the praised president for what he has done in the private sector reforms, like for instance, the National Investment Board, but also they said that um, they are now going to start sending teams to come to Sierra Leone. Because what normally happens with most of these investors, they normally send um, advanced teams. They come to your country, they look at um, ta the taxation um, ecosystem, they look at um, what you've done in terms of reforming the private sector, and then explore opportunities, and then they take it back. So in all of those meetings, I think that was expressed, but they're also impressed with what we've done. But added to that as well is that um, Qatar and Sierra Leone has a synergy on education, because they're also quite big in terms of what they're doing for education. So there's what we call the Education Above All Foundation, which obviously um, is part of the Qatar ecosystem. So um, we went to the Qatar Foundation, and the president had the meeting with um, the CEO and one of the board members. And it was in that meeting, they also praised president a lot about education. But then they committed that they are going to make sure that through the Education for All Foundation, they are going to now support about 45,000 children you know, who are out of school to go back to school. And the reason why it's important is that, yes, we have free quality education, but there are a lot of other reasons why children may not go to school, you know, whether because some of them, um, parents have not um, accepted for them to go to school because um, they are selling in the market, they are selling shows, you know, so all of those things. So what they are now doing is to make sure that we, they have a project, a program wherein they now specific target on those children who are out of school and see how they can take them back to school. So I think on the whole, I think it was very refreshing. Uh, uh, Kekatoma, uh, Every time the president makes a trip, it does cost the country a certain amount for, you know, the logistics, uh, basically. And we do have ambassadors in, 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 in some of these countries. Uh, explain why the need for the president himself to make those trips when we could possibly use our ambassadors. Well, like I said, two things. Firstly, at certain level, okay, you have to get the commitment for foreign direct investment at the president's level, the highest level. Because we don't have an embassy in Qatar. We have an embassy in Kuwait, which is covering Qatar. Now, what would normally happen is that um, it's about traveling back and forth. But this was the president making a visit on the invitation of the Emir of Qatar because of all the things he said the president has done in terms of education, protection of women and rights, and all what we're doing in terms of um, the reform of the Security Council. So he has been so impressed with what the president has done in four years, and then he said, okay, the last time you came was in April 2018, mm -hmm. okay? It has been a while. Come back, let's see how do we make sure that we strengthen this relationship. Come back and let's see how do we discuss now specific things. That's why I made mention about the issue of now on the agriculture and also mining, and they're having further discussions on things, what they can do. But then it is, it is easy normally for these um, ambassadors who are there to pay this visit. But at the state level, there are certain things that you have to discuss which only the president will be able to do. So all the trips the president has made since his inauguration into office to now, all those trips, not a single one of them, we could have had one of our ambassadors make a representation on behalf of the country? No, because that's the first thing. In fact, um, I'll give you an example. As recent as this weekend, you know the ECOWAS, um, they had an emergency um, mm -hmm. uh, meeting on the, um, the constitutional transition in countries like Mali, mm -hmm. Burkina Faso, which the president did not go. So what happened was the president had to send um, the uh, high commissioner in Ghana to represent um, him there. So, which basically tells you that where he knows that um, one, um, we, do, we are time bound for him not to go, you know, he make those conscious efforts, those conditions for people to represent him. Mm -hmm. But where he also knows that there are strategic interests you know, in those meetings, it goes there. So, for instance, there are many times we've gone to, um, for instance, in, in Washington, you know, um, during those meetings, he would normally hold lots of um, bilateral meetings along the side. But in those bilateral meetings, we'll be able to probably engage the IMF or the World Bank or the GP or many institutions who would make commitments that will benefit Sierra So I think for him, every tip he has to make is a tip that is strategic.
mm. and then you always have to weigh what are we getting in return and why it has to be there. But for instance, like in Rwanda, most of these other meetings that statutory meetings that as presidency level mm. you have to be. Okay. Um, the, the, the president moved to Rwanda, Rwanda and yeah. then to France. Yeah. Um, the Commonwealth um, meeting and then the um, education, the UNESCO Education um, um, Committee meeting as well, of which, of which is co-chair. Yeah. Uh, but from Qatar, what, what are the benefits we're getting from these other two meetings? What's what, what the essence of it? So like Phoebe was asking that, even with France, uh, the Minister of, Information, uh, of Education was there. Why couldn't he represent the president? So like I said, there are certain meetings that um, presidents would have to go by the nature of either the statutory level or him having a responsibility. So let me start with Commonwealth. Okay. Now, Commonwealth was a statutory meeting, which means that it would have to go as head of state mm. because his colleagues were there. But there are two things normally why you go to this multilateral um, 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 forum. Because when you go there, firstly, even though you go and you discuss about Commonwealth, about how you advance um, international cooperation and everything, but also it's a good opportunity to make sure that you meet your colleagues who ordinarily... So say, for instance, Fibian, you are the president of, um, let's say... Um, Vietnam or president of, um, um, let's say, Argentina, and the Lambrana is the president of Lebanon. You know, if I am here in Sierra Leone, okay, I would have to go probably to Lebanon and then go to Vietnam, go to those countries. But then when you meet at a forum, it is easier for you to have your bilateral engagement on the sides. So that's normally also the other advantage of those um, uh, multilateral meetings. So, for instance, when the president went to um, um, Rwanda in Commonwealth, even though it was on the Commonwealth, he also used the opportunity to speak to the um, Prime Minister of Singapore, the Prime Minister of Belize, you know, to further our relationship. So imagine if the President had left Sierra Leone to go to Singapore and then come back. The President had left Sierra Leone to go to Belize and then come back, you know. So that would also be very um, costly as well. So that is one aspect of these meetings for bilateral engagement. And in those meetings as well, um, we also had commitment to support us for the UN security bid, but also to see how we can explore um, investment relations. But all of those heads of state, what was very striking was that, because most of them, for instance, um, when we met with the president of um, Rwanda, you know, President Paul Gugame, we all talk about how amazing Rwanda is. We all talk about how far they've developed, you know. But it's taking more than 20 years. So, so I was going to go to that. Rwanda yeah. is one of the countries in Africa yeah. that um, show the rest of the, the continent, the leaders in, in the continent and the world, that uh, development is possible for Africa. Mm -hmm. We can get to that level where exactly. we're no longer uh, a, a, a qualified um, to be called a developing nation. What were the take-homes between uh, President Bio and President Paul Kagame? So let me tell you what was the amazing thing. That because Paul Kagame is a role model for many African states, for many African leaders, it was the same Paul Kagame who said, Mr. President, in four years, I admire you so much what you have done in Sierra Leone on the progressive reforms, on education, on the rights of women, on abolition of death penalty, on child APRM. So this was somebody who we all look up to, like you said, as a role model for Africa. And even when the president was there, they held the bilateral meeting. In fact, in the bilateral meeting, it was the president of Rwanda who was saying, Mr. President, yes, he said, I have done all of these things. Because obviously I've been in power now for more than 20 years, okay? But you only four years, but you have done so much for your country. And interestingly, after the Commonwealth um, meetings, they normally have what they call the um, concluding press conference. Mm -hmm. So in those press conferences, they will normally identify each um, leader from probably a continent. You know. And it's for because now he's the incoming chair of um, Commonwealth. In fact, um, President Pokogami had to select President Bio to represent Africa on the concluding press conference. So it tells you that um, what President Bio has done in Sierra Leone, you know, Many of his colleagues across the world, especially somebody like Mpok Gami, you know, they hold him in a very high esteem and they use him as a role model. In fact, when he was, um, when the um, Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Patrick Scotland, was even introducing and he was saying, this is somebody who has done so much for his country, you know, but that resonates across all the meetings that we went that heads of state... Aside from colleagues. the praises during the meetings, as you're putting it now, what were the take-homes uh, from President Paul Kagame by our president? 
So, firstly, one of the take home was that uh, President Kagame is now going to probably um, send a delegation to come to Sierra Leone because one of the things that they discussed was that um, President said, President Bill said, listen, he said, we all admire you as a president of Rwanda, what you've done and the leadership, you know. Um, we want to learn from what Rwanda has done. You know, Rwanda had genocide, they had the bitter past, we also had wars, you know. What can we do to make sure that uh, some of what you've done in Rwanda, you know, can be done in Sierra Leone? And then the um, president and um, Paul Kagame said, it's good. So what we're going to do, we're going to send a delegation, a team to your country to speak to people across board, um, in governance, in the private sector, Ministry of Trade, in agriculture, because they're doing quite well with coffee plantation and agriculture. You know, we are going to send a team that those team is going to provide what we call technical assistance mm -hmm. to see how we can share experience in Rwanda with Sierra Leone, you know, and how we can make sure we strengthen this relationship. So that is one big thing as well, you know, because at the end of the day, Lambrana, countries don't move <coughs> if they don't have the expertise. So if you don't have the resources, you know. But what we've done with the relationship between Thailand and Rwanda is to make sure that at the presidency level, at that highest level, you have a camaraderie which is very inspiring, you mm -hmm. know, because they respect that they admire each other. But also secondly, they can now be able to use their expertise, all that they have done, all the experience, and share with Thailand, which can be able to use to start to model some of the things that we do with Rwanda. I, I, it, it sounds like, I listened to the president, you know, at that press conference you're talking about, yeah. it, it sounds like... He admires yes. Rwanda so much, yeah. and uh, one of the points he was making was about people. Yeah. You know, what the people are doing yeah. to get the country moving. Mm -hmm. um, in what context was he saying that? Was it that, that Sierra Leoneans, the, us, the people, are not supportive of government, or, or we are not working with government to help change no, things? No, he was just talking about the, the mentality of the people, okay? Mm. Um, for us, the problem we have in Sierra Leone is that everything is just reduced down to politics, mm. you know. By, by who? By, is it by government itself well, and those in well, opposition? Not, well, not by well, not by government itself, mm. you understand. Sometimes um, by the opposition mm. um, party. So, for instance... The but government the, itself plays politics. No but, no, but what I wanted to say <laughs> was that, you talk about the concept of the people, so I'll mm. give you an example. For instance, the Bintumani conference mm -hmm. that was held for peace consolidation, you know, which was a platform where... We would thought ordinarily everybody would have gone, and then we, you know, we do a. But the people a, went. A it's just few people, few politicians no, who didn't go. I'm just but giving you. I'm just giving you, an, I, I'm giving you an example. Mm -hmm. of, so the people know, in that context, is he talking about the opposition? No, no, no. So people, that was just an example of um, the border people. Mm -hmm. segment of the people, so mm -hmm. the opposition, mm -hmm. but also in terms of even our own culture, our own mentality towards governments can do, what government cannot do. Mm -hmm. So for instance, Sierra people, you know, want you to say this, this, uh, this is government's property, okay? People don't take it here, they don't respect it, they don't, they don't value it because it's government's property, you know? But in those countries, even the culture, the culture of work, the culture of being productive, the culture of being positive, the culture of supporting your leader, because we hold elections every five years. And every five years when people go to the pools, they go to the pools to cast their votes. After elections, we would finish, we would move on, you know. And we believe that um, when we begin to inculcate that culture of saying that um, not every day is election, not every day is politics, you support government. There is, I always say this to people. You, not every time what the government will do, government will get it right, or government has the monopoly of wisdom to everything, you know. But that culture of making sure you obey law and order, that culture of making sure you don't fan chaos, that culture of making sure if obviously we have rules and regulation, you know, making sure how do we make um, protests, democracy and conflict. If you don't satisfy those conditions, you don't go to the streets. Mm. Those are all part of that culture that we should um, 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 inculcate. Mm. Because at the end of the day, I always say this, there is time for election, there is time for development. And we should spend more time to chat and discuss and come together about how we develop our country. Mm -hmm. Because five, 10 years, 15 years, these are years of our lives, okay? That if we lose them, we lose 10 years of our lives. Okay. So, but what presidents will do in those 10 years would have impact on the lives of many people. Okay. So whether it's free education, for instance, now, um, across the country, you have kids in Kabbalah, in Makini, in Falaba, factual rich areas, the school feeding programs. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of thousands of kids are benefiting from it. It is not because these are just kids who their parents support SMP. No, these are kids who are in areas who even, so, who even support the opposition parties. You know, mm -hmm. but the culture of supporting government, the culture of being patriotic, 
the culture of respecting law and order, mm. the culture of making sure that not everything we should get used to politics. I think that is what President was saying that in Rwanda, there is respect for leadership. Mm. In Rwanda, there is respect for law and order. Mm. In Rwanda, people support processes. Okay. I think that was what you were saying. And it's early on that is not happening. We are not saying it's not happening. Mm. What we are saying, there are challenges. Mm -hmm. And that is what, normally when I come to these programs, I always end by saying, I encourage us as Sierraleanians, okay, that not every time we have to do politics. There are times we have to put to national cohesion, developing our country. Let's share experience, share ideas. Mm. Lamana, you would have an idea about development, which I would not have. But when we have these conversations, okay, you share them with me, I share them with you. We meet at a point. I will learn from you, you will learn from me. That is how our country has to move. It, it, it could be argued again that um, in such countries like Rwanda, it's also um, credited to the leadership. Yes, but we're doing, we, we're doing marvelous. Our leader is great. Okay, our leader is great. And like I said to you, you know, when you go to those multilateral settings, so let me even take you to Paris. Now, the SDG for High Level Steering Committee, this is the highest body the UN has formed dedicated to education. For the fact that in four years, they can appoint and choose President's Bill out of all the heads of state in the world to chair that steering committee, it says a lot about how the world sees the president, about how the world values the president and the respectability. But it does not only stop at that, but its vision about what he can add. And in fact, when we went to the, break, the breakfast meeting, the UNESCO executive director, she said clearly, because she's also co-chair, mm. we are here and we are happy to have the president of Sierra Leone to share with the world what Sierra Leone has done in education. And believe me, Lambrana, where you sit, you understand, you have goosebumps. Mm. The um, UNICEF team that went, when they were talking to the president in the bilateral meeting, the director for global efforts, he said to President, Mr. President, in UNICEF, we are catching up with Sierra Leone. What you have done in education, on innovation, mm. on the digital education, what you've done, you know, the many things you did during COVID for education, we are catching up with you, you know. And these are things people say because they read, they know, they have teams here, they look at it. But we are Sierra Leoneans. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we overlook those things. But these are big things. So, like, mm. going back to Fibian, there yeah, is respect no. for the president because he's done a lot of things. Uh, uh, Kekatoma, one of the most celebrated presidents as well in um, recent times in Africa is uh, Magufuli of blessed memory. Yeah, in Tanzania. under yeah. four years, mm -hmm. uh, Magufuli transformed Tanzania with not a single loan uh, 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 under his tenure, but yet he was able to make such a huge impact in four years. Now, bringing that to Sierra Leone, uh, uh, President Bio made several huge commitments during uh, the campaign period uh, uh, leading to his election. And then now in office, uh, depending on who you're talking to, there are still concerns from several quarters and not necessarily uh, uh, opposition members, but citizens as well who do not even have not even gotten to the point of deciding uh, where to throw their, their, their weights when it comes to politics. What does the president do when he hears all of these things? Are the presidents doing so much? Uh, cries of his citizens saying, oh, you've not done X, Y, Z. There's still corruption here and there. There's still X, Y, Z. What does the president do on a normal day when he's in office and there are all these things happening? So I'll start by saying that um, the world is a different place compared to four years ago, okay? I always say this. So when we went to Putloko and we- Magufuli died last year, just to mention. Yes, but that's what I'm saying. But, but Magufuli, Magufuli also had opposition members who we are saying in Tanzania, okay, that there were a lot of things he was not doing right. Lots and lots of them. Because everywhere in the world, I mean, in the great United States of America, you will speak to people, they will have their concerns, they will raise about um, President Biden. You go to the UK, they will have concerns, they will raise about um, Prime Minister Boris Johnson. So all leaders across the world, even in Rwanda, even in Rwanda, who were in the um, press conference, when the lady who was representing um, um, the BBC, he was asking questions about um, human rights claims, asking questions about um, detention and many things. So in a sense, Every leader, every president, every head of state, okay, faces those things. But let me tell you what President Bill offers. President Bill offers to this country a leadership that is genuine, passionate, and cares about Sierra Leone. Okay? There are many things we said we were going to do. 
most of the things we've done them like like, okay, like free education we've mm -hmm. done it mm -hmm. for over 50 years mm -hmm. okay we had the 55 years mm -hmm. we had this seditious libel law mm -hmm. okay for journalists mm -hmm. president after president after president but he said no i'm going to repeal it mm -hmm. the um law to abolish death penalty mm -hmm. okay and um, now we have increased electricity across Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. there are many communities before now which never had access to electricity but now they have water you will see many reports are coming. Oh, but one of we the major things you spoke about to Andul is mm -hmm. the bread and butter issue, the economy yes, of but people, that's why their I livelihood. That's, that, I think, is, is the most paramount of, of, of every other person. Yeah. That is what they care about. How do they live? How, how their, their well-being is taken care of? Yes. That's and, why and I think that the most paramount thing you, you, you're not talking about. No, that's what, no, no, but we are talking about it. Mm -hmm. Because that but is what why... you just mentioned are just legal no, 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 reforms because, no, because, and education. No, because when I was going forward, mm -hmm. You interjected. Mm -hmm. I was going to continue. Mm -hmm. I started by saying the world is a different place, okay, from four years ago. Many things have happened, mm -hmm. and it is a context that we have to discuss. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't discuss this context, you just think that four years when we took up office, the, co the world is still like the same place. No, it has changed. Mm -hmm. We had COVID. COVID affected many nations, including our nations, mm -hmm. okay? It took away a lot of things from us. It gave us a lot of economic burden and challenges. Okay, and then we had the war in Ukraine. These are contexts we have to talk about. But, but, but they're, in they're, the midst of that, they're, they're but let, countries, me, let me say. There are countries where COVID killed more people than mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. where it affected them more than us, but they're moving. They, 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 they're moving beyond no, it. No, but tell they, me. They built institutions. No, no, they built institutions that reacted to yes. whatever is happening. But what the point I'm no. making is, what I'm asking is, what are the actions government is taking to address some of these issues? These are things that will happen. Yes, they're, but, they're natural. Yes, but what I'm saying, tell me which country in the world, mm -hmm. okay, for the past two years, the inflation has not gone up. Yes, but they, which they, country? They, they, but they have, they have things that they do to exactly. address those and things. These are things that we've done. So mm -hmm. I'll give you, for instance, what we've done. When we came, we, we, when the COVID hit, okay, what happened? We realized that um, what we needed was to have enough commodities in the market, availability of commodities, okay? Mm -hmm. Because what was important to, was to make sure that um, these are things that people should have access to. So what we did was 50 million US dollars we gave to the private sector, which encouraged people, business people, to import more commodities to this country. What have we also done? We have also made sure that um, taxes on rice and flour and many of, of those things, we're taking them off. That is the bread and butter issue. Because when President had a meeting with the business people, he asked them. He said, we are doing all of this. He said, but it is not translated to the people. And then they also don't work on it, okay? And then what have we also done? We have also made sure that at the height of COVID as well, mm -hmm. we have the emergency cash transfer, which we're still doing now. Mm -hmm. In fact, in the budget that was sent, okay, there was this cash transfer program, which basically means that we are going to increase the people who are beneficiaries from 35,000 to almost 70,000. Is it so that you're not doing enough that, that could create the um, desired impact no, because in, in, in the, the lives of people? No, because no. People have insatiable demands they always want more. Mm. And I understand that, mm. okay? Because let me tell you, like I said to you, all around the world, in the UK, the inflation is 40 years high. Mm. In, in the US, it's almost 40 years as well, the same thing. So, but what we are saying is this, that as a government, we are taking concrete actions. That was why we even went to do the emergency budget. Mm. Because we realized that um, there are many things that, because things have changed, we also have to change. You know, when President Bio came to power, you know, he announced that those orders, which, which spoke about traveling, um, you know, organizing conferences, cutting down some incentives to people in public service and the civil service as well, um, at a time like this, you, you mentioned, we've been talking about this, that you inherited um, an economy that was on life support. Uh, at a time like this, that things are so difficult, is the president thinking about going back, you know, to what he started with? You know, those things that um, could reduce some of the expenditures in government or within government to cushion some other areas? Well, there are, there are many things the president obviously is thinking that there are many things we're doing. That is why, like I said to you, um, these are thought processes that obviously that um, we, we're taking through. And then um, nothing is off the table, mm. okay? But um, what is more important for now, like you always said, um, these are not normal times, okay? One of the major problems we had is about um, availability of fuel, the fuel scarcity, okay? Uh, it has been triggered by reasons and things out of the government's control, mm. okay? But, but one of, some, but, some government but, officials have been saying it's sabotage too. 
It's, well, um, there are times, obviously, when obviously there is sabotage, because, for instance, you saw yesterday the uh, Minister of Trade and Deputy Minister, they were out, mm -hmm. because sometimes you have fuel stations who would normally stock fuel, but obviously they're not selling to people. And like I said, so it comes back to the culture of the people. Mm -hmm. So when President Bio was saying in Rwanda that the people, the people, the people are supporting the leadership, supporting government, supporting the country, okay, that was what he meant. How could you imagine that you have some fuel stations who would have fuel, and then they close down. They are not selling to people, okay? That's not about government. Mm. It's about even people, their own mentality, about understanding that these are difficult times, these are trying times. But you cannot hold fuel. You cannot, for, you cannot hold foreign exchange. The people are even holding foreign exchange. So what's happened? Government had to give millions of um, dollars to the OMCs to make sure that we support them to import fuel, okay? Because people are holding foreign exchange. When we had the redomination, the, the currency, Many people were crying it down. Many people were saying, oh, it would not work when people are very negative, you know. But so far, so good, okay? Because what it's saying is that, you know, there are times when, trying times, people have to rise above sabotage, mm -hmm. okay? People have to see our country, see us, see Sierra Leone, and see your Sierra as somebody who think, because of your effort, you can benefit. Why do people have to go to the market and people are just raising prices up? Why? You know, so it's about the culture of our people. It's about making sure that during times like this, we look at our people and say, okay, what can I do as a Sierra Leonean if I'm selling my business, if I have a fuel station, what can I do to make sure that I ameliorate the suffering of ordinary people? If I have fuel, for instance, at my station, why wouldn't I sell? Why would I have to keep it and make sure that we have queues or necessarily in places where it's not meant to be? So that is about the culture of the people. So we have to change it. The, the Sierra Leoneans are making, you know, government, the president himself has said this, these are not normal times and um, call on people to make some sacrifices, which I'm sure a lot of Sierra Leoneans are adjusting um, themselves and their, the way they live their life um, as well, how they spend as well. There is this, um, you know, issue of fear increase. And government spends a lot, even within governments. There are a lot of people within governments who receive fuel cheats and um, have other allowances. I will ask again, is this, is this something the president think, you know, can be reduced within government to save some money? And as well, the way people travel, even himself on how he travels, how much we spend on it. Is, is this something that is giving a thought to, to, to think about. Like I said, there are many measures and actions which are under consideration. Mm -hmm. um, you also have to make sure that um, some of these actions and considerations, you also want them to have the maximum impact. So it's not just about announcing them. It's about making sure that they have real impact on what actually affects the ordinary man, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, um, li li like you make mention, no, that's what I'm saying. So we are assessing them. We are assessing them. So for instance, if you want to say, um, cut, um, cut fuel, you know, um, say, for instance, um, things like the travels and all of those things, you know, you also look at, okay, how much this would cost in real terms, actually. And if we do that, where is this money going? What would happen next, you know? So those are the real impacting things that you have to think about because it is one thing to talk about measures, mm -hmm. but it's another thing to make sure that those measures that you implement, they have real impact on ordinary people. Mm -hmm. And that is why I made the mention about um, the issue about um, taxes that we've removed from rice and flour. Okay, we've done that as a government because we are compassionate because we care. Okay, but why is it still that some of our businesses, our people who are importing, why is that not translating to the ordinary people? So these are the brainstorming things that we have to care about. And I come back to culture as well as I was saying about the people. You understand? Why do you think that there are people when um, EDSA would put transformers in communities, they would go and vandalize those transformers just to deprive communities? of not having light. So those are the fundamental questions we have to, we have to ask ourselves about what is our responsibility as a Sierra Leonean towards our development, towards national cohesion, towards making sure, towards making sure that um, our country, we have um, stability, you know. So those are critical questions. So, Kekatoma, as a Sierra Leonean citizen, are you comfortable mm -hmm. being a Sierra Leonean and living in Sierra Leone right now? Um, I'll say that I'm I, asking I am you very, now as that's an what I'm individual, yeah. not as the presidential spokesman. Okay. So I'll say to you that if even I was in UK, if I was in UK, if they ask somebody in UK, are you comfortable in UK, you will say no. Mm. The reason being is that gas price is up. 
No, but I'm asking Food you is, now. No, 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 I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I want to, no, I want, I, I want different. to lay a premise, okay, <laughs> that even if I was not in Sierra Leone, mm. they ask any citizen in any country in this world, even in Rwanda, they ask a citizen, are you okay at this material point in time? When the price of fuel is up, when inflation is up, any country you will say, no, I am not okay. Because that is the nature of the human being. Because we want things to be better, because we aspire our lives to be better. So in Sierra Leone, anybody you ask, they will say, yes, there are challenges, I'm not okay. I am not okay, not because of the makings of the government, but because there are things which are out of government control. The war in Ukraine, we don't have control. The COVID, we never had a control. And are there things governments can do? Of course, yes. But government can only do things with respect to the resources government has. Because, say the for government instance... government is constrained with resources? Very, very constrained. Now, Mona, don't you think, don't you think if our country, Sierra Leone, the president, we have so much resources, mm. don't you think that we will just keep the price of fuel at 10,000 euros, we will continue to subsidize for the rest of our lives? Mm. We will. Kekatoa. Because at the end of the day, no, let me learn. Because well, at the end of the day... the question I mm -hmm. asked you. Yeah. I was very specific. As a Sierra Leonean yourself, now not speaking as the presidential mm -hmm. spokesman, are you comfortable being a Sierra Leonean and living in Sierra Leone? I've just answered your question. And the answer to the question is that whether I am in Sierra Leone, whether I'm in Sierra Leone, I am in UK or I am in US, anywhere in the world, wherever I am, if, they bo if somebody asks me, are you comfortable? No. Because so you're not yeah, comfortable be, living in Sierra Leone presently? That's what I'm saying. Wherever you are, mm. no, ask you, are you comfortable? No. Is the president Because at concerned? the end of the day, no, but, no, but let me land. This is important. Mm. Mm. Let me land. Because at the end of the day, even if you are in UK, you are in Rwanda, inflation is up, the price of fuel is up, um, the price of basic bodies are up, you will not be comfortable. Because the nature of human being, we aspire for our lives to be better. We aspire for things to be better. So in these challenging times, even president, he will tell you that um, the way the country is going now, ordinarily, do you think if there was no Ukraine, there was no COVID, we would not have gone to further places and more development? Of course we would have. Ordinarily, because these are things which Kekatoma, obviously are affecting I, us. I, I'm sure that um, the president being your boss uh, uh, doesn't just, uh, you know, have that um, boss and uh, uh, employee relationship. I, I, I presume there are times when you have an opportunity to have privileged conversations, correct? Yeah, of course. When you talk to the president, or normally his mood when he comes to the office, especially on days when there's a lot of concerns on social media, particularly um, from citizens, does the president come and look, you know, celebrating, especially with all the praises that um, uh, members of his government and his supporters rain on him, or is he really concerned about those people who do not have access to him but who are affected drastically by some of the actions and inactions of the government. Yeah, but of course, this is the president who has said publicly, on many occasions, that there is hardship. Mm -hmm. And he knows that. This is the president who has admitted, yes, that people are saying the ground dry. Yes, the ground dry. He has admitted it. And he has admitted it and given, given you a reason why he's doing that. Many times, he has said to you, he has prioritized education, that he has invested so much in education, and now 2.5 million people and children are now benefit from education. School feeding program. Children who are in fat or rich areas, more than 600,000 children are benefiting from a school feeding program. So definitely, this is the president who sits in office and knows that, yes, he wants to do more. Dr. Samabanya recently um, says the president should speak to the people. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry for an article in the mm -hmm. Global Times as well, Believe Same. Mm -hmm. Is the president ready to speak to the people? And their point is to, to give the people some confidence to let them understand what is happening. Lamrana, the president was elected by the people. Mm -hmm. And it will change every time to speak to the people. Okay. When, we, when we came from Paris, okay, immediately, we went to the pilgrims. He spoke to them. So at every time, he wants to speak to the people. Yeah, national broadcast. Of course, he will always want to speak to the people. Is that something he's thinking about? He, he has always thought about it. He is, always is thinks about it. Is that going to happen pretty soon? Is, is that something that will happen soon? That is part of our consideration. He's thinking about it, okay? But like I said to you, it is not just speaking to the people. Because when the president speaks, it's not just a Keketoma speaking. Mm. It's just a Lambrana speaking. It's the president of Sierra Leone, okay? okay? And he's always good. 
in telling people about hope, about optimism, what government has done, what government intends to do, and how we'll make sure we'll get there. Because even himself, as always said, these are not normal times. We, we need to take messages, but I want to ask you this quickly. Um, is the president concerned about um, current human rights issues, specifically the police and the inspector general of police? Let me read quickly what the UN um, Special Rapporteur on Freedom of um, Assembly and uh, Freedom of Association says. And um, in his tweets, he said, I'm concerned about reports related to yesterday's arrest and detention by police of a number of people, mainly women, who demonstrated against the cost of living. I urge the states to immediately release those detained and to guarantee their access to justice. I remind the government of its obligation to guarantee the right to peaceful assembly, whether planned or spontaneous, and regardless of uh, the organizers, registration, status, authority should facilitate peaceful assemblies. I mean, it's unfortunate with the UN rapporteur because he's speaking out of context. He's mm. not inside, he does not understand our laws and nothing. Mm. You just don't um, get spontaneous um, 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 protests. Mm -hmm. That is not what our law says. Mm. So when he talks about spontaneous protests, it's, you know, it's just probably unfortunate. So is the president you know? concerned about um, these things that are happening globally? No. This, is, this, is, this is at the UN level. But that's Someone what I'm is, saying. Is but but even at the UN level, mm. it's also important mm. that he has to brief himself properly. Mm -hmm. He has to understand about selling and the context you know okay. it's not just to write on twitter mm -hmm. that is not enough mm -hmm. he has to know about our laws he has to make sure he educates himself mm -hmm. okay people in Ceylon do not do spontaneous protests mm -hmm. our law is clear the public order act of 1965 section 17 subsection 1 is very clear that when you want to do a procession you give notification to the police and the police by subsection 2 of section 17 the police the ig would have to reply to you to either disallow the protest or allow the process and gives you conditions. Those are conditions which must be met. And therefore, if you, as a citizen, you understand our law, you know what is operating, you will not just go to um, 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 the street and then you protest. Because this is law and order. This is mm -hmm. about law enforcement. And also, at the same time, it also means that even if you write to the police, okay, you also have to ensure that you wait for the response of the police. Mm -hmm. Because that is what subsection 2 of subsection 17 is saying that you wait for either the IG to either disallow or allow it on the condition set, on the basis of public interest. There has been call for the uh, president to relieve the IG, uh, calls for him to, be, to even resign. Is the president satisfied with um, the, the work of the police, of law enforcement, especially by the police? Is he satisfied? Asylum police is an institution, mm. okay? It is not a asylum police created under SLPP. Mm. They have institutional challenges. Okay, um, there are different ways they would approach human rights. Okay, there are different ways they would approach law and order. But it's an institution which is also reforming. They are doing trainings. Okay, and it's the same thing. Along police, also you have police officers most times who are also at the uh, at the end of citizens. Some sometimes they you see normally videos of police officers who get attacked and everything. So it's a difficult job. Do I think Sierra Leone police would obviously need to do more for human rights? Of course, yes. Is the president satisfied so far with, with human rights issues within the police and the work of, um, the, the way the IGP that he appointed is dispensing his work? Is well, satisfied? Well, there have been concerns. And From those, the presidency? Yeah, of course there have been concerns. Okay. Or concerns about human rights, mm -hmm. okay? About, obviously, um, what could be done better and the aspirations are what we're doing, okay? But let me tell you, where the police is now and what they're doing now, okay? It's an institution that all of us have to support. Because at the end of the day, police is about law enforcement agency. Police is about law and order, okay? Yes, I mean, for many people, okay, they have opinions about the IG. But I will always say again, to be the IG of police at like it's a difficult job, it's challenging. Okay. Because at the end of the day, okay, when, as an IG, you see, for instance, videos of police officers being attacked by citizens, okay? It, it, it goes to your core because these are people you have a responsibility of. Okay? Kaka so Toma, the as, point as, we are, the, the point I'm saying. As challenging as it seems, it's mm -hmm. still not rocket science. Mm -hmm. The uh, concerns that have been coming up by the public is the institutions responsible for policing the police itself. And I know, yes, the police is under the office of the vice president. But at the presidency, are there efforts? 
to pay attention to this and get the right institutions in charge of policing the police to effectively do their work. Because in as much as you make references of, you know, police officers who have been assaulted, if you're doing a, a, a ratio, there are less of those as compared to instances, videos of police uh, using excessive force on citizens. But that's what I'm saying. The police is an institution. It was not created under SLPP. What are the efforts it's, of the presidency? No, I'm, I'm coming. <clears throat> Let me build the foundation. It was not created under SLPP. It has been in existence for years. Under the APC, we had lots of things that police were doing and everything. But the point I am saying is, are, are there have been concerns about the way they execute human rights issues? Of course, yes. And are those concerns be taken into consideration? Of course, yes. There is the police council. They look at all about those things. When there are allegations, we have the, we have the independent police complaints board. They look into these investigations, you know. But these are challenging times. Okay. And that is why I was saying, okay, that even <clears throat> us as citizens, we also have to make sure that we respect the law and order. Let's take few we messages. support police as well. Let's take a few messages. We need to just go. before we take the, those mm. messages, I know Remy is all set with sports. Um, mm. There's a call by the Human Rights Commission that um, the holding facility, Benghazi, uh, uh, violates uh, uh, human rights uh, 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 in the country. And also it's against some of the um, treaties Sierra Leone as a country have signed up to. Uh, is the presidency looking into this? Those are part of all the concerns that have been raised. The Human Rights Commission is an institution of the state. Mm -hmm. Okay? Those are all concerns they are looking into. Those are all things, obviously, when you talk about reforming the police, there are many things we we'll have to do. Okay? okay? The police is not going to take some overnight. But they are doing a challenging job. Okay. But also, as citizens, we also have to make sure that we respect the police. We also have to make sure that we respect law and order. Because when the law says that you have to notify the police and you receive by order from the IG, whether you are disallowed or allowed to go to the street, you obey that. We'll take few we'll messages, take very messages few. The first one from Dao Tarawali says, Alamgana, please tell Keke Toma that presidents and members of his cabinet should cut down on their travels and also on non-essential meetings in luxury hotels. Uh, James, um, James Amos Kagbo says the president can never be concerned about human rights issues. How could a president justify the killing of over 100 um, prisoners and, uh, and opposition and brand opposition as terrorists when in actual fact there are audio evidence of people at the prison uh, as uh, early as 5 a.m. before the massacre took place um, and the presidential guards at 8 a.m.? For the big camera says, Sierra Leone is bigger than Rwanda as far as I am concerned. We just need a good, uh, we just need good leadership to fix the problem of our country. Abdul E. Kagbo says, uh, remind Keke that Sierra Leone is a signatory to international laws. We shouldn't have assented if we value our national laws. The final one I'll take is from Suleiman Soare. He says, President Bio has indeed done enough to address some of the challenges this nation is faced with. Let's get, let's be realistic. This is a global problem and it will um, possibly be solved soon. Mohamed T2 is asking, Keke, are you speaking to protect your position or are you absolutely um, filled with the common citizens in the country? The, final Not, the economy is blotted. Nothing is good about it, Keke Toma. The final one I'll take is from Nelson Nano. He says, three weeks back, the U.S. President Joe Biden, in a speech to his citizens, said, is not okay due to the present challenges. In that speech, he urged the gas and oil companies to play their positive roles in adjusting the prices. And my final message is from Lamin P. Albert. He says, okay, Keketoma, watch your words. Soon you will be in opposition and your words will be used against you. Okay, quickly, we have, um, you have one I mean, minute, Yes, so I thank obviously all the Texas. Um, obviously, it's participatory democracy. People have to give their comments. But two things. Firstly, um, somebody said um, what we're experiencing now um, is a global issue. Of course, it's a global issue because these are things which are out of government's control. But what we are also doing is to make sure that um, we are taking measures. For instance, I spoke about um, the, the credit facility for the um, investors. Um, with the fuel um, scarcity, what we've also done is to make sure that um, we support the OMCs with foreign exchange. In fact, we've spent more than 50 million US dollars just for the OMCs, you know, to help them to import fuel to come to this country. You know, so there are many things we've done. Okay. And um, there are challenges, of course, we know. Uh, these are not normal times. But what Sireland is going through, we are not unique to it. Um, countries like the UK, the US, 
around the world. Inflation is high in all of those countries, you know. But um, at the presidency level, one thing I'll assure you and our sure citizen is that we have a president who is honest, a president who cares, somebody who is committed, and somebody who wakes up every morning I want to do the best for Sierra Leone and the best for our people. Thank you very much, Yusuf Keke Thomas, and the presidential spokesman um, from Citadel for talking to us this morning.